Oh my god. Well, Marvel has done it again, guys. They have made us fans lose our collective minds with just a freaking trailer again. Yes, folks, with the release of the final trailer of the Avengers Infinity War, Marvel created more buzz around this movie than we've ever witnessed before with any other movies. And the fans have very good reasons to be buzzing about it like this as well, folks. I mean, with every Avengers film, the team gets bigger and bigger, but yet, the struggle to save the world, or this time, half the universe, seems to be getting tougher than ever before. In the trailers, we've seen the original team of Avengers teaming up with all new additions to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and the Avengers team like Black Panther, Doctor Strange, Spider-Man, and the entire Guardians of the Galaxy, and by the end of the latest trailer, it still looks like we might just be losing a few beloved heroes. Wait till you see this next one. Everybody dies. Dude, dude, dude. Not everybody. No. Is that? No. Alien, whatever. Can we rewind that part? Yeah. No. Can we? Re you'll cut that. That's part. not. Who, is there anybody in Infinity War you, you get to meet that you're excited? Regardless, like I've already mentioned previously, the final trailer for Infinity War came out last week or a couple of weeks ago, depending on when this video comes out and when you actually watch it, and it is time for us to look back at it and really try to understand what's happening there. And folks, the biggest question in everyone's minds right now after they all witnessed the final trailer for Infinity War is is loki turning his back on his brother again is he going to betray him again is thor that dumb or what we saw the god of mischief doing in the trailer by handing the tesseract to thanos was it actually an effort to save the life of his brother so ladies gents and marvel enthusiasts from all around the globe let's take a look back at the breathtaking final trailer of the avengers infinity war and really try to break down the important parts of this trailer which is like the entirety of it and let's just get right into it guys right off the gate we hear this serious soundtrack in the background as we see a rotating shot of a upside down new york you wouldn't really think to look at the shot again, but that's why they call me Mr. Details, because um, I really have a good eye for details. Anyways, anyways, as the shot rotates, as New York becomes upside up again, right here in the far back, right there, we saw something heading straight towards the Earth. What could this be? Could it be just a meteor? Could it be Thanos' ship? Could this be the Asgardian ship that we saw in the end of Ragnarok? Or could it be Hulk? My money, guys, is actually on this being Hulk. Because, guys, remember the previous trailer where we actually saw Bruce Banner crash down in some building somewhere in Earth? I think that's just him crashing towards Earth and the scene we saw in this first trailer was the scene after the one we saw in this trailer's opening scene when he was actually falling from the sky. We then see Black Widow, Banner and War Machine looking at something in the skies as we hear Gamora explaining to someone what Thanos is wanting to do or what Thanos is all about. However, even though they made it look like Gamora was actually talking to Tony Stark or Iron Man, I'd actually argue that she wasn't talking to Tony at all. Because look at the difference between the two backgrounds. It looks like Gamora's on a spaceship of some kind and Tony Stark looks like he's chilling in an office or some living room somewhere. Next, we see Spider-Man hanging out. Literally hanging outside his school bus, hanging out, putting his mask on, putting his old mask on, I should say, and chasing after possibly the circular Q ship that we saw in the previous trailers, you know, roaming in the skies of New York. Oh, and we also see the same Q ship a couple of times in this trailer as well. Now then, we see Tony Stark or Iron Man chasing after the Q-Ship as well. Now I don't think Iron Man and Spidey have the same objective here. We still don't know why Spider-Man was charging towards the Q-Ship, but I have a strong feeling that chasing after it is going to get him in big, big trouble. Probably, in my opinion, in my educated opinion I should say, 
Spider-Man gets stuck in the ship as he tries to flee and it's on Tony, or Iron Man I should say, to try to save him. Then we hear Iron Man coming up with some kind of a plan in the background that they have what Thanos wants and that he plans on using that to their advantage. He's obviously talking about the Infinity Stones or the ones that they have. He'll probably try to bait Thanos into traps with these stones or probably he's going to use these stones powers against Thanos himself like Doctor Strange used the Time Stones powers to negotiate with Dormammu in his first movie. As Iron Man vaguely puts forward his plan for us, we see Strange doing something while wearing his Time Stone necklace. So we know shit's about to get real with Strange here. We then see a shot of Wakanda. We see Captain America, Scarlet Witch, Black Widow and company coming to Wakanda. And they're all being greeted by T'Challa. And then we see Shuri developing some kind of tech that will help the Avengers in her lab. So if you ask me, I think there will be multiple battles in this movie fought in multiple occasions. And I also think that the Avengers will have to split up and one of these key battles will take place in Wakanda because well we've seen Wakanda way too many times to not be involved in a war and more on that later as well because we have scenes that literally shows us a battle in Wakanda anyways on the very next scene we see the Guardians landing their ship somewhere and getting out of it very cautiously so they might be in enemy territory right there and followed by that we see Iron Man with the Guardians where Star-Lord totally wows Tony with his huge ego and renders him speechless in some kind of an alienated planet and then we see Thor the God of Lightning summoning his inner powers of lightning in front of Rocket and Teenage Groot. If you ask me, I think Thor here is definitely trying to charge up his new weapon with his lightning after he's done forging it. Yes folks, we know, we have confirmation now that Thor will in fact be yielding a new weapon in this movie. And I'm 100% sure that Thor here is just done making his new weapon and he's trying to power it up. Moving on, we then see Black Panther and Captain in a war vehicle charging towards some kind of a war as Black Widow seems to be bidding farewell with the glare she's giving out to Captain or Black Panther or both or whoever she's looking at right there. Okay, then we see this cool shot of Hulkbuster and Falcon and the regular Iron Man suit flying towards something in the background. Guys, there have been rumors already that underneath the Hulkbuster in this scene, it's not Tony Stark, rather, it's actually Bruce Banner. Well guys, I might be wrong, but I truly think that Bruce is having trouble with the Hulk again, as in he cannot control his rage to turn into Hulk whenever he wants, and he resorts to using this Hulk buster in this scene instead. Then we see this Q ship crashing into the other world. I think this was the same planet as we saw Iron Man and star -Lord having a conversation earlier. Then we move on to one of the more interesting shots of the trailer as we see someone green holding Thanos' finger and walking away. Now I know a lot of people are saying that it could be death as Thanos is very openly interested in death and some are saying that it's Gamora and that she's still under Thanos' commands. But I think it's a part of a flashback scene from the movie of when Thanos actually adopted Gamora in the first place when he first conquered her planet. Because the hand we see holding Thanos' finger here is definitely a child's. So I really think it's from a flashback scene from the movie. We then see Thanos ragdolling Thor around like he's nothing. He's Thor for fuck's sake, he's the god of lightning guys. And then Thanos proceeds to hold him by his head as we then see the Black Order, Thanos' little group of villains or whatever, with a very threatening body language towards Loki. See. This is one of the most interesting parts of the entire trailer. So this scene right here of the Black Order holding Loki captive, that Loki will not be betraying Thor in this movie. Everyone was so half-bent on blaming Loki for the Avengers' troubles in this movie, but I think he's just trying to save his brother's life when he's handing off the Tesseract that Thanos proceeds to crack with his gauntlet like it was nothing. 
And guys, if anything, I don't even think Thor's life is even in danger here. Everyone, I mean everyone including me initially thought that Thanos was squeezing Thor's head and squeezing the life out of him by squeezing his head. But no, I don't think he's doing that at all because now I think because of Loki's failure to use the Space Stone to take over the planet Earth and Loki not returning the Tesseract sooner, Thanos is actually going to punish Loki instead of Thor. Thanos is going to have him killed in my opinion. I mean look at this shot right here. I'm sure that the Black Order kills him right here at this scene. And Thor is actually being forced to watch his little brother die. That's why folks Thor is actually crying or screaming in agony because guys he is hurt that his brother is being killed. He is a very emotional guy as we already know from the first two movies. So this could actually be the real actual time we see Loki die finally in this movie. But then again like Dragon Ball Super and the Dragon Ball franchise has the Dragon Balls Doctor Strange now has the Time Stone, or Marvel now has the Time Stone. So, I think Loki can be brought back if necessary by altering the timelines. However, moving on, we then see Strange make magical platforms that Star-Lord jumps off of to charge towards something, followed by Strange brutally being tortured by Ebony Maw, a member of the Black Order. Moving on, we then see Hulkbuster getting totally torn apart by the enemies and guys. This is where my theory and the rumor of Banner being inside the suit comes into play. I think just when it looks like Banner is about to die right here, what if he turns into Hulk from inside the suit just when he's about to die? That would be a cool thing to see, right? Right guys? Am I right or am I right? So anyways, we then see a shot of Iron Man looking defeated as his bleeding edge suit of armor looks to be totally dead and destroyed as Thanos utters, I hope they remember you. Guys, of course, initially we have all thought that he was talking to Iron Man himself, but recently we got news that in the German translations in the subtitles, they used the plural version of you, meaning more than one life could be in jeopardy in this scene. And finally, folks, we see another great breathtaking and shocking shot of Thanos trying to attack Captain America, but Captain America, instead of being overwhelmed by the powers of Thanos, he's actually stopping Thanos in his tracks, despite Thanos already wearing the power stone on his gauntlet. What the hell, guys? Captain is of course stronger than an average man, but Thanos just manhandled Thor, the god of lightning, in a previous scene from this trailer. So there's no way Captain can survive or stop this attack from Thanos. Even Thanos right here looks very shocked. Shocked as fuck, guys. But don't worry, I got you covered. Don't think I'm just rambling here without any kind of explanations because I got you covered and I have kind of an explanation. And I will tell you how this is all possible. Guys, there's actually a great rumor or theory floating around that Captain America and his time in Wakanda in this film had the heart-shaped harp inhaled, meaning he has his strengths and abilities enhanced. So he now has the power of Black Panther as well, on top of his already powerful body. And the other part of this theory would actually totally legitimize Cap's strength in the scene and that would actually be that the heart-shaped herb is actually powered by the soul stone. This is a part or this is a version of the soul stone. So being empowered by the soul stone, it just might be possible for Captain America to hold off Thanos' infinity gauntlet for this attack at least for a little bit. And of course, at the end of the day, we end the trailer on a little bit of funny note or a positive note as Peter Parker doesn't even know that Doctor Strange is actually a doctor with the last name of Strange. And there's a joke about it in the end, of course, because, well, it's Marvel, guys. And to finally end the trailer, we see Spider-Man in his new suit given to him by Iron Man, showing off all kinds of skills. 
And that's the final trailer for Infinity War, folks. How did you like our breakdown and explanations? Let us know in the comments below. Also, let us know if you think differently about any part of the trailer in the comments as well. So guys, that's the video. Leave a like if you enjoyed it and share it with your friends. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook. And don't you ever forget to hit the bell icon to get notified every time I come back with a new upload. So guys, that's all from me for now and I'll be seeing you all soon in the next one. Peace.